Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name's John Hale, and I am a Maryland Backyard Beekeeper. This is the second part of our buying and installing a nuke uh, uh, video. And so in the first video, I got the call from Maryland Honey Company. I went and picked up my nucleuses, brought them home, and set them on the hive stands in the backyard where they're ultimately going to live. In today's episode, we're going to actually go over the process of taking those nukes from the nuke boxes that they came in from the supplier and transferring them into the actual hive bodies that they're going to live in uh, for the foreseeable future. So we're going to walk through that. I'm going to do a little quick inspection, mainly because I, I paid for uh, marked queens and I just kind of wanted to see if I could see the queens. Um, but we'll walk through that. It was a little cool, so, uh, so I was trying to limit how much time I actually spent in, in the nukes. Uh, but we transferred them to their nuke boxes uh, so that the hives can, can get on their way. And we also added uh, our feeding, feeding uh, system on top. And uh, I'll talk about that as we go through it. And, uh, and, and we'll go from there. So if you uh, like the episodes, I hope you uh, hit the subscribe button and follow along. Uh, but this is part two. So here we go. So the first step that I needed to do was actually move the nukes from from on top of the hive stand where I placed them yesterday and set them beside the hive stands so I could actually work uh, on the hive stand. I did this so that when the bees left this morning they would orient uh, to where that hive stand was so that after I put the nukes into their hive bodies on that hive stand uh, the foragers are, that were out would be able to find the hive and come back right to it uh, and they would enter the hive as if they it was still the nuke. So. Uh, so this is my empty hive bodies uh, that I'm putting on. I, I'm using deep hive bodies, uh, and I'm using 8-frame equipment. Um, <clears throat> so because the nuke is 5 uh, frames of bees, and this is 8-frame equipment, I need 3 frames of, of foundation additional. So I have, I bought um, the Max Wax uh, plastic foundation from uh, Man Lake. It's wooden frames with plastic foundation inserts with uh, double coats of wax on them. So <clears throat> since this is a five frame nuke, I'm gonna put the five frames in the middle of the nuke box. Uh, but I took two of the, uh, the new blank empty frames um, and put them on the far outside edges. So uh, out of eight frames, there's gonna be uh, a frame, a uh, new frown foundation on both the left and the right. And then what I'll do with the last foundation is after I insert all of the five foundations from the from the uh, from the five frames from the nuke, is I will uh, add the last frame found frame in to to do the spacing correctly. Um, I also pitched the hive forward a little bit, uh, so I used a uh, actual I used an additional uh, uh, entrance reducer. Uh, to set under the back edge so the hive is pitched just slightly forward uh, and this prevents water from pooling on the landing board uh, if it were to rain so water would want to run off the front of the hive uh, and it's just a little thing to do to help the bees uh, it's not necessarily ab absolutely needed but it is something that's nice just to keep the water from pooling in front of their front of their entrance so I lifted it up with a, using a, a uh, entrance reducer, and I also put an entrance reducer with the largest opening in the front. And the reason why I use the largest opening is because um, the uh, this hive is already established, so they're pretty good. Um, I added a little smoke to the nuke boxes in the front and on the top, and I let that settle in for a second. And then once that was settled in and the and the bees were calmed down a little bit, I went ahead and took the nuke box cover off and started the transfer process. Now I'm using eight frame equipment here. Uh, I will tell you that in my area, most beekeepers use ten frame Langstroth hives. Um, I just happened upon this eight frame equipment uh, it was used from a beekeeper who was getting out of the hobby um, and so uh, I was able to get all my woodenware uh, for basically 25 cents on the dollar so 
while I had planned on using 10 frame equipment, uh, the 8 frame equipment basically fell into my lap. Uh, once again, as a benefit of joining my local beekeepers club, I was able to see the post when he decided to get out of the hobby last year, and I was, was able to pick up his wooden ware. Uh, I didn't, I didn't get any frames or anything like that or any comb, uh, but basically it's wooden ware. So, uh, so I'm using eight frame equipment, uh, deep hive bodies with medium supers. So this is the first frame I'm pulling out. I pulled out the frame. Uh, I'm pulling them out in order. Um, and uh, I was checking the frame. I noticed there was a buildup of burr comb on the bottom and on the tops of the frames, which is normal. Uh, so I was trying to clean them up a little bit. Uh, I started down the road of cleaning each each frame, and I realized that this was a, lo a losing battle on my initial move. So I actually decided just to opt not to do any more after that first first couple there. Um, the important part is when you put them into the new into the hive bodies, is you put them in the same order and the same direction that they were in the nuke. Uh, and you do this because the, the workers and the queen have, have gotten used to where things are located and it just makes the transfer that much easier if you re-keep them in the same orientation. Um, as I'm pulling the frames out, I'm, I'm looking for my marked queen. Um, and, uh, you know, you never know where she's going to be. You never know if you're going to actually see her anyway uh, because queens can tend to, tend to be elusive, especially if it's cool. Uh, you know they want to they want to stay warm, so they will run and hide and and uh, do everything they can uh, to to uh, to get away from you. So it is a little bit of a battle to to look for the queen. Once again, as you notice, I'm I'm being gingerly with them. I'm pulling them out uh, fairly slowly. Uh, flipping them over fairly slowly, making sure that I don't knock any bees off by accident, um, and then putting them into the hive bodies fairly slowly, making sure that I don't roll any bees. Uh, as I'm placing them in the hive body, I'm leaving adequate space in between each frame because I'll space them out at the very end before I close uh, the box up. These frames were absolutely loaded with bees. I mean, they were just loaded with bees and brood and and various stages of development. Um, I was very happy with the status of the bees when they when they came out of the nuke. At this point, I noticed a supersedure cell right in the middle of the frame, and that scared me a little bit. Uh, so I went ahead and destroyed it. It was full of jelly, uh, which means uh, that there was a possibility that this hive, for some reason, uh, didn't have a queen for a certain period of time or whatever as the nukes were being built. Uh, but, uh, but it did have a supersedure cell in the middle, uh, so I went ahead and destroyed that uh, just to be on the safe side. This is at this point I realized I was placing it in the wrong order than what I pulled it out of the, the nuke box, so I reoriented it and put it back in in the correct order, so in the correct direction also. Once again, just observing the brood pattern, uh, you know, larvae, eggs, uh, and and the nurse bees and their their uh, general um, 
feeling about whether they were nervous or concerned or whatever. Uh, like I said, it was a little, it was cool outside. It was about 50, 52 degrees out. So it's a little bit cooler than what I would like it to be. But I wanted to go ahead and get them transferred into their, their final hive bodies. So this is the last frame from the nuke coming out. And I've not seen the queen at this point, so. No, I just saw her. Let's see if we can get her close up. The queen is uh, right there. She's got a white dot on her. So on the final frame, uh, I saw the queen, and she was on the outside, which just goes to show that you really don't know where uh, the queen's going to be located in the hive. So you have to be careful with every frame that you pull out. Um, at this point, I'm going to start the, the process of spacing the frames out. Uh, so I'm using the, uh, the outside new undrawn frames to help push in the, the center frames uh, to get them spaced correctly. And I'm going to add the eighth and final frame in. And go ahead and, and check the space one more time, crunching up the, the middle so that I don't get any wonky comb in the center of the, of the hive. As you can see from the activity in front of the hives, the bees were not too terribly concerned about what I was doing. Um, you know, they're not they are not really hitting me too hard. They're not bumping me. They're not warning me that they're not happy. Um, but like I said, it was cool, so I was a little concerned. Um, so at this point, I'm going to try to dump out the, the rest of the bees that are left in the nuke box. And this does kind of set up a little bit of a, a frenzy there. Uh, they didn't really like that too much. Uh, <clears throat> and I went and got my bee brush and actually brush out the rest of the bees that were in the nuke box. And um, I learned something very quickly, that the bees do not like the bee brush in any way, shape, or form. So... So I'm going to take a step back and let the bees chill out for five seconds or so before I move on to do anything else. Um, just let them calm down a little bit. So I'm not going to run an inner cover on these hives, and the reason why is because I'm going to use the sear cell hive top feeder. And that's the, the blue uh, frame and tub located behind me. So I'm going to give the bees a little bit of smoke just to kind of push them down into the hive a little bit. Um, and then once again, I noticed that the frames were not really spaced correctly and, and I wanted to respace them and clean off the tops of the frames, get any of the burr comb off the top, uh, so that the, they didn't, they didn't stick to the hive top feeder. So the Searsale hive top feeder uh, is a food grade plastic tub with basically five chimneys located in it, one in each corner and one in the center. And those chimneys allow the bees to come up and then go back, crawl, go up the chimney and then crawl back down uh, in gain access to sugar syrup or sugar or dry pollen, whatever you happen to put in the top. Um, in this case, I'm going to run uh, sugar syrup 
uh, because I want to encourage the bees to build out comb. Uh, so I'm going to run one-to-one -one sugar syrup. One-to-one -one sugar syrup means that it's one pound of sugar for one pound of water, um, and it goes by weight. <clears throat> so uh, I have sugar syrup pre-made and, and staged over uh, to the left here. So uh, at this point, I'm going to call this, this hive completed, and I'm going to do the same process for the second hive. Um, unfortunately, I don't see the queen in the second hive, but uh, everything else goes fairly straightforward. All right, so I'm going to speed up the episode now. Uh, this is going to be the exact same process, but for the second hive. So I'm going to put in the entrance reducer, put the entrance reducer behind it to prop it up and lean it forward, put the hive body on, and then put in the two uh, new frames with foundation, um, and then transfer the five frames from the nuke over to <coughs> the, uh, the final hive body. Once that's done transferring, uh, I'll then add the eighth frame in and adjust the spacing accordingly. And when it's done, I will wrap it up by putting on the uh, hive top feeder with no uh, inner cover for this particular build. Now I went to get the uh, actual syrup for the uh, hive top feeders. This is the one to one sugar syrup. Key thing to note here is I pre-staged everything that I was going to need. Uh, everything that I thought I could need also. So I had my, my bee brush, my smoker, my uh, sugar water, uh, everything pre-staged so that I have to spend less time uh, moving about. So with the, the, the benefit of the sugar seal hive top feeder is the fact that you can put a lot of sugar syrup in at one time, which minimizes the amount of uh, time you have to spend in the hive to do things like add, add feed or whatever. So uh, with these hive top feeders, uh, they're rated to hold about two gallons of sugar syrup. I chose to only put about a gallon and a half into each one, and then what I was going to do was after... Uh, two or three days, check them and, and top them off as needed. The uh, The benefit of the Sear Seal Hive Top Feeder is that you can open the top of the hive and check the syrup level and add syrup without ever having to go into the hive and disturb the bees. So <clears throat> the downfall is that you're adding sugar syrup into an open container while these bees are buzzing around. So uh, of course, you know, there were a few bees who jumped in and, and they get stuck and they flap around in the sugar water. So I uh, gingerly pulled those out before I closed up the hives. But so here I've added one gallon into each and I'm, I'm bringing in my third gallon of one to one sugar syrup and I'm going to add in about a half gallon into each one. So it's about a gallon and a half in the top of each hive top feeder. At this point, I start trying to fish out the uh, the bees who decided they couldn't really wait to get through the sugar water. Um, each each one had about two or three bees that just jumped in right away. And then the final step 
is to install the hive top. Um, in my particular case, or the top cover, in my particular case, I'm using what's called garden style uh, hive tops or top covers, on, which are basically little peaked uh, roofs with uh, copper on top of them. Typically, uh, most hives have a flat hive top cover, um, and it's got some kind of metal covering just for weather resistance purposes. Once again, fishing out a couple of the ladies who just couldn't wait. And with that, we will call this installation complete. Thanks for joining me for this episode. Uh, I hope you come back and uh, see the next one, which will be a hive inspection. So thanks a lot, guys.